Hi, Mystery Recaps here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror comedy movie called Black Friday. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens in a retail chain store called All Mart, where the preparations for Black Friday are in full swing. A store employee named Monty climbs a set of stairs to tie a promotional banner above the shelves. Suddenly, something strange hits the store's roof at incredible speed and crashes inside, creating a hole in the process. Monty immediately drops whatever he's doing and goes to check what caused the damage. He soon comes across a strange sight. A disgusting-looking blob of flesh is splattered on the store's floor. Monty then cautiously approaches it as the blob appears to open from the middle. It reveals a weird-looking parasite, which has a mouth-like opening at one end. Just as the Almart employee leans in to get a closer look, the parasite spits a white toxic liquid. A horrific scream fills the store as Monty's blood gets splattered on the wall behind. These capitalist aliens are spitting jizz. Elsewhere in the same city, a toy store employee, Ken Bates, visits his ex-wife's home. He is there to drop off his two daughters before he heads to his shift at the We Love Toys store. It is revealed that his ex-wife recently married a man who is a good, regular guy, but the daughters complain that their parents are too boring. It is obvious that they want to spend more time with Ken and not their mother. However, Ken has to work, even on Thanksgiving, for he did not obtain custody, but you better believe he's paying for their house. So, he leaves them with a heavy heart. Following that, he goes to his co-worker Chris Gadecki's place to pick him up. It turns out Chris is a timid guy who still lives with his parents. His father has always thought of him as a loser, and in assaults him frequently. Nonetheless, Chris and Ken have a great friendship, which makes their tiring work life slightly easier. The duo drive to work still bummed that they're working on Thanksgiving night. On their way, they notice that Allmart, a major retail store in the area, is closed on such an important day. Little do they know that it's been infected by the parasitic larvae from earlier. Outside the We Love Toys, a long line of anxious customers is waiting for the store to open. A husband and wife are also in the queue to buy toys for their children. The man is clearly not feeling well and says that his abdomen region is hurting. The wife, however, tells him to tough it out, as they cannot afford to lose their spot in the line. The Jizzlians save no one's spot in line. Moments later, Ken and Chris join several other co-workers as they all get ready to open the store for Black Friday. Ken also has a back and forth banter with one of his co-workers, Marnie. It is obvious from their chemistry that the two are in a relationship. Meanwhile, another employee, Bircher, goes outside the shop through the back door to smoke. This is when he notices a jelly-like blob attached to one of the cars in the parking lot. He leans in to have a closer look, but ends up accidentally locking himself out. He then bangs on the door hoping someone will listen, but in an unfortunate turn of events, something fatally attacks him from behind. The scene abruptly changes to the inside of the store, where the employees are informed that they won't be getting paid breaks for the night. They are already irritated enough to be working on Thanksgiving Day, and this news only makes things worse. Ken is also being tailed by the new employee, Emmett, for the night. After everything is prepared, they finally open the doors, and a horde of customers runs inside the store. They start to gather toys like crazy, buying everything they can get their grimy little hands on. The store staff get busy off the bat, and Chris has to deal with an angry customer quite early on. He then comes across a gooey substance while re-racking a box of toys. Marnie also notices an old man absentmindedly staring at her from the other side of the store. She's creeped out, but ignores it and gets back to work. While all the staff are busy, a grumpy old lady goes to sit on Santa's chair. The camera then pans downstairs, and we see the parasite from earlier is under her chair, and she likes it. Somewhere else in the store, Chris's day goes from bad to worse. He is brought to clean someone's vomit, but it's actually liquid secreted by the parasite. It's already infected some of the customers, making them mutate into monsters. Chris gets busy cleaning the mess up, but is taken by surprise when the infected customers attack him. He manages to save himself, though, by smashing them with toy boxes. Soon afterwards, another employee, Archie, comes out of the staff room and is confused to see the aftermath of Chris's struggle. He reports the matter to the floor manager and poor Chris is put into tension in the storage room. No one believes him when he says the customers attacked him first. Outside, another employee, Emmett, is also attacked by a mutated woman. She spits out a white gooey substance to infect him. Deal so good you'll blast out of random orifices, but Ken saves him at the last minute. The two then quickly run to the other employees to tell them about the experience. They also try to call the police, but to their surprise, the line is busy. Despite everything that has happened, the store manager is adamant on keeping the place open for the rest of the night. He believes that his employees are just slacking.
walking due to the hectic schedule. Moments later, Emmett gets a seizure and starts to mutate into a disgusting creature. Cashier Anita tries to help him, but she's instantly killed when Emmett yeets a load at her. He then completely transforms into a monster and tries to attack the others. Thankfully, Archie hits him with a nail gun and pushes him outside the store. Now, the group calls the neighboring store to ask for help, but learns that their shoppers have also mutated. When they ask for a solution, the lady on the other end simply urges them to separate the mutated shoppers from the healthy ones. Seconds later, the phone call ends abruptly, indicating that the other store has been completely taken over by the mutants. In the next scene, the employees decide to run to the sales floor and hide there until everything blows over. The manager is still worried about not getting enough sales tonight, but the others shut him up. When Anita also starts to transform, they quickly run to the sales floor. The sight in front of them makes them freeze in fear. The floors are bloodied, and a woman is dragging half of someone's body towards the Santa World section. Employees Archie, Brian, and Chris see that more customers are coming into the store, so they risk their lives to close the main entrance, giving the others an opportunity to flee towards the storage room in the back. Meanwhile, Ken heads to the bathroom to find a bottle of whiskey that he had hidden there. The manager, who is also there, sees him trying to find something and asks what he is doing. At this moment, a mutated customer lunges out from one of the bathroom stalls and attacks Ken, but he and the manager somehow push the mutant off and run outside. Simultaneously, Marnie notices the mutant shoppers gathering at the Santa World through the camera. She goes outside to check and finds that the mutants are merging themselves into a giant parasite that's growing every minute. This worries her, so she hurriedly runs back to the shop and meets Ken, the manager, and other employees. They then finally shut all the doors so that more people can't enter the store. Suddenly, they notice a police car headed towards their location. The group breathes a sigh of relief, but their happiness doesn't last long. The car drives straight into the store, making way for the mutants to come in. The employees run to save their lives, but Chris is attacked by a female mutant. Archie tries to help, but in turn, the woman spits out the gooey substance and infects him. Still, Archie tells Chris to run away and fights till his last breath. He is of no match, though, as a barbaric mutant rips his stomach open and eats him up. This jizz takes life away. In the aftermath, the remaining employees rush to the back of the store, while a mutated Emmett follows him. It appears that more people are going to die, but Marnie manages to kill the mutant with the help of a nearby steel wrench. Now, the only employees left are the manager, Ken, Brian, Chris, and Marnie. Unfortunately, the power goes out, and they are forced to use glowing toys to light the room. They now have no choice but to stay here until the situation is under control. A few hours later, Marnie brings out turkey from the fridge, and the group enjoys it together. No, that's gonna make them sleepy. But their joyful moment is once again cut short as the two best friends get into an argument. Chris belittles Ken for working at a retail job and for dating Marnie, who's half his age. To everyone's surprise, she says that she isn't dating him. This only hurts Ken even more, because he thought they had chemistry. Frustrated, he decides to leave the store once and for all. The group then makes their way to the electric room and discusses that they can still go outside through the loading dock. They plan that once they're out, they can use a truck to escape the mutants. As they look for tools to open the dock's door, Emmett suddenly reanimates, and he's now stronger than before. He then launches an attack on the group and eventually gets into a fist fight with Ken. After struggling for a while, Ken manages to knock him out, but gets bitten in the process. The others try to save him, but he asks them to stay away, thinking that he'll also turn them into a mutant now. They suggest he cut his arm off to prevent the infection from spreading, but Ken refuses. If I can't masturbate, life isn't worth it. With heavy hearts, the group is forced to leave him alone. They then manage to open the dock's door and rush inside the back of a nearby truck. In the meantime, Ken, who has locked himself in the loading dock, waits to be transformed, but for some reason, he remains unaffected. As he ponders on what to do next, a mutated woman barges through the door. This sends Ken into a state of panic, so he lights up a stuffed toy to distract her and hides in the back of the shelves. Back in the truck, Chris sees a horde of mutants approaching them at full speed. He panics and tries to start the truck, but doesn't know how to. With no options left, he returns to the rest of the group and tells them about the impending danger. The mutants soon arrive and start banging at the truck ferociously, but the group opens the back store and somehow reaches the store before any of them are infected. Once inside, they climb an emergency exit that takes them upstairs to the roof. However, another problem arises. When the parasite that's been growing inside the store pushes the roof's vents, this frustrates the manager so much that he delivers a heartfelt speech about how much he hates shoppers. Then, he jumps into the vent, deliberately pushing the parasite away from the roof. Back inside the store, Ken wears rollerblades and hides behind the shelves from the mutated woman. He sets up several traps and distractions, but she is very persistent. She 
she eventually finds and drags him through the room, and Ken notices that she is the same rude woman who he served in the store earlier. Soon, the woman takes him to the parasite and hooks him, but he manages to hit her with his roller skates and escape. That was the most masculine thing anyone's ever done with roller skates. Back on the roof, Brian shockingly reveals that he was the one who bit Ken, and not a mutant. He's hated him for a long time and wanted to take this opportunity to end him for good. Enraged by the revelation, Marnie calls him an awful person and starts to hit him. A scuffle then ensues and they both end up falling off the roof, but fortunately they land in a garbage bin and are safe. Chris soon follows suit and also lands on a pile of garbage. Following this, the trio gets out of the bin and runs to the parking lot to get a car. The entire store is now filled with the massive parasite, which is about to burst at any second. Seconds later, the group is horrified to witness the parasite emerging from the top of the store. The entire place is on fire and the little parasite is now grown into a giant mutant, 100 times more dangerous than the others. Brian then notices that the parasite is made up of all the shoppers and claims that he can get through to them using his management skills. The others don't believe him, but Brian is determined to calm the shoppers down. He walks towards the giant in plain view, like he would approach a customer, and tries to reason with it. How would you like some $800 headphones for 40% off? Surprisingly, the parasite seems to be listening to him, and even calms down. But just when they think the plan has worked, it kicks Brian to death. Those headphones were never $800. Chris and Marnie are horrified to witness his tragic death and start becoming hopeless. But this is when Ken comes running towards them with his SUV's keys. They then rush towards the vehicle, but are attacked by the giant mutant midway. At this moment, the group realizes that someone has to distract it for the others to survive. Ken appears to have the bigger balls, so he takes the initiative. He then starts yelling at the monster while the other two scurry away to the vehicle. Suddenly, Chris sees a forklift nearby and gets a brilliant idea. He quickly climbs on it and approaches the monster, who thinks the vehicle is a human being. It then tries to merge with the forklift by attaching a sticky net of white jizz to it, but Chris yanks the forklift towards it and jumps seconds before the impact. The sharp driving axle hits the monster right in the eye, causing it to fall into fire. Ken, Chris, and Marnie then watch on as the giant burns to its death. The movie ends as they escape in their vehicle, but on the way, they see more massive monsters emerging from other stores. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.